nothing down to greet me. When I saw the touch, the badge, I said, Thou, because this name is almost universal. We have it in Liberia. I said, Are you from Liberia? He said, No. <laughs> I said, You are from uh, Panru, because I know Gabriel Dao, what? he was living with me, small boy. He said, No. So I started doubting. I said, Thou from where? He said, I'm from Bor. Oh, to my surprise, because we were not far from Bor. My dad was assigned in Tali, Terkeka, controlling those areas there. We were not far from there. So now your story is very painful and touching, which demand, this is the right place that we're in, demand forgiveness and reconciliation, dialogue with others so that they can really appease your soul, your tormented. Now, the challenge was that how, how Gandhid and I, we came from West Africa. The people we knew here was Johnny Dane and Columbus. They were small, living in homes with some whites. And also, they, always they ran to us for counseling. Especially, this is my boy, son there, Frownsome. He would run in the midnight <laughs> to the house and come to Gandhi. Gandhi will take him back. You know, Gandhi, he was a principal in, fact, in, in Liberia and he taught in so many schools. So he made him where he is today. Now, when we came here in 1995, I in person wrote a constitution of our association here in Arizona. That was Sudanese Association by then. We submitted it and registered by the state here. They have only one office. Now, when we registered it, our brothers from the north, they concocted their own and they said, Sudanese American Association. And they went to the lady, the counselor, the lady. She said, oh, Sudanese Association. No, 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 we don't have anything like that. Either you are American or you are Sudanese. And you are Sudanese already, go and join the association of the Sudanese Association here in Arizona. It is already with us here. Go and join them. They went to the director of the refugees up in the capital. And that fellow is called Chairman. Chairman is our friend. He's He's married to somebody from the East, but he's an American. So he said, oh, do you know these people with the turban? They came to, our, to my office here. I said, well, these are our brothers from the Sudan. They said, wow. They came here and they, they wanted to, that they have an association, they wanted me to help them. We said, oh. And they were with us. We have selected two of them to be in our board of trustee, in our association. Then they went behind us and went to Chapman. And Chapman said, no, I cannot do that. We have a Sudanese association already here. Then he asked us, I said, well, we are Sudanese association. We are an umbrella. We have satellite organization in within here. If they come with different intent, they should be a part of the whole. So the men said, okay, I will tell them that. So we had 3,000 people in this state when we came. It was very effective. When Karan came here, the number, he was very impressed. And how we set things and organize things. He said, well, you people, you are wonderful. And if you go to the South, Every person coming to the United States he would love to come to Arizona. Simply of the fact that this was a seat, a magnetic seat to capture people coming from all over the world, including whites, in fact, they wanted to come to Arizona to see what is happening here. So, 
you know, you said something before. I said, what is happening now? We used not to have a small hole like this. We have a large one. We rent a large one. And even some of them will be out. They're standing out because they want to come in. But no space. But it's a pity. I'm really touched for the fact that one of the elders came here and saw something like this. What I'm going to tell Gandhi today, tonight, if I go to that meeting. But you have done a wonderful job. Dialogue is very important. We are peace our souls. Thank you. Your story is very touching. And uh, though we will not all tell our story, uh, what you just say is enough for all of us because we all have similar story. Uh, our story in South Sudan, I wanted to compare it with one of the stories that um, affect all of us individually in this country. You know the issue between uh, white people and black people? When black people say, you dim discriminate us. But some of the black people never thought of who actually bring them a freedom to live in this country though the slavery was started by the white it was also the white people that bring the freedom it was not Dr. Lutheran King by himself it was with the help of people. So when we talk of Dinka and, <coughs> and Noer, it's a word of generalization. We cannot generalize all people. It is just the same as white people and black people. There are good white people that are fighting very hard for black people to get in, into that freedom. The same here. There are some Dinka with the name, no one call them Dinka, but there are good hearted Dinka like Mr. Dow, who can forgive the people who murdered his mother and wanted to make peace with them. And the same thing, there are some good Nure that will never turn their back with their brother Dinka. You guys need to know that. We are in this, in this room right now, but we have different hearts. But here we have hearts. We share hearts, like the heart that our brother Dao have. We all live in peace. We all gonna live in peace and harmony. We will not have a problem like in our country. So what you just started, the dialogue, in the United States, where we live here, there are uh, founder fathers. If you go back to the story, the founder fathers were not too many people. It was just a group of certain people. They have disagreement, and some of them came to the conclusion. They started slowly, and it come in effect. And now we live in freedom. So for us to live in freedom in our country, it is start by you now. You started with this simple dialogue. It's simple to us, but in the future, if we keep it together and support him and his team, we will live in good peace and harmony and the longest peace. And I'm telling you. Way back then, when when the when the war did not happen in, in our country, we live in Arizona here, and we all know each other. But now I can recognize faces that that I knew five years ago, but I haven't seen them for a very long time. We live in the same city. You see that? 
I had to go to do other things today, but because of this dialogue, I promised myself that I have to come here. Because I'm one of the good women that I mentioned, that I will never turn my back to my brother. I live here, and I, I'm proud to be a South Sudanese. I say to many people that if we hit Denka, and Denka hit Nur, do you know the reason why God created Nur and Denka and put them in one continent and one country? Anybody can answer that? No. It only God knows. We have similar culture, things that we call, we call them in, a different, in, in, in the same name, in a different language, but we have different background, different, different uh, I mean, same tradition, uh, same line of, uh, of, of, uh, of cultural background, so we are all the same. Denka, Nuer, Shuluk, Anyot, Morale, all these tall people, they have the same culture. And then we have our brother uh, in Quatoria, they have similar culture with us. This is why God put us in that country. You will never go anywhere and see a black man like me. You will never meet that is the South Sudanese. You will never miss us with different black people in Africa. We have different uh, type of black people. But if I see a Denka somewhere, I will ne never question in my mind, this is my brother. And the same to you. So there is a reason why God put us together. So with that, I will not take too long. I wanted to give chance to another person. But I want to let you know that what you start today, don't stop here, just keep doing it. God will be with you, and God will be in the heart of the people who want the peace within the South Sudanese community, here in Diaspora, and back home in our country. God bless you. As we know, animal kingdom, they have all different types of different animals, and the way they live day and, day and night, Every, every animal wants to feed on another animal. The example, the best example that we all source release need to take, not only in Arizona, but in diaspora, <coughs> is the example of bubbles. I think all of us know the buffalo. I don't know in uh, different languages, in different dialogues, but in uh, Dinka, we call it Anyang, the buffalo. We know lion is the king of the forest. When buffaloes are together, when they are together, no lion can attack them. Can we so Sudanese be as together collectively, peaceful people, start from our own heart? When the lion come, what they do is to scale off the buffaloes, so that buffalo will run each individually in their own direction. And then from there, we'll go and catch one and eat it. But if the lion will stay together, I mean, if buffaloes to get, uh, stay together, the lion can never try to eat them. Can we learn through these animals? If we fight with one another, you don't kick somebody. When you fight with somebody, you have to combine your fingers powerfully and then punch 
an individual. Brothers and sisters, if you open your fingers and punch your enemy, your finger will break into pieces. But when you combine them, you will be able to repeat. Can we come together? Thank you. Uh, I know she misapplied three times yesterday. And, and she kept trying, trying until she can. And that spirit showing that she's coming to be here with us to talk about the peace. Uh, here's a community here in Arizona. We are a very strong community. And I can see the faces here. Most of us. Those people here are the leaders of the community. I'm very happy they are here today. Even though there's not enough people here, but those are here are the leaders. And we know that. We have a uh, grand camp over here 2004, and he started here in Arizona. He went back and he signed the peace. Uh, we are always a blessed place to start. So the thing most of us forget to always put it in front. We always forget we need to put the God first. The grace of the God is always important and it helps us, it gives us very strong spirit that can make us move. Uh, I know people in Nanyanya Wan, my brother, uh, Professor Lago, during this time, they always pray before the war. They pray after the war. But our brother, the young brother right now in southern Sudan or everywhere, no one pray anymore. I think this one is the, is the consequences. If you forget about the God, there's nothing God is good. Our country is not strong. Our southern Sudan, Sudanese country is not strong. Everywhere we go, we don't hold. We don't hold ourselves. We don't hold the water. We go out and adopt other people's culture. So, in order to do that, to hold your culture, you need to follow the God. God will help you to be strong. <coughs> this is one thing. Other thing is, uh, we need forgiveness. If you don't forgive out each other, you don't go anywhere. Uh, like, most things going on in our, in our source so that people don't get, forgive each other. And they come up with something always uh, when you have other tribe or other people kill your tribe or kill somebody from your tribe, you need to revenge. That's create lawless and create non-stop. You, you, don't, you don't stop fighting. So I know in some area they call them uh, <coughs> loan. You loan somebody so that you kill them. And then the other person will come and loan somebody from your tribe. And you just keep going, keep going, keep, keep going. Uh, while I was there in Southern Sudan, I heard a story. Uh, there's one guy from Ethiopia who was in the Lake State area. He was running high speed and he hit the kid. So, and the kid died. So he, he knew that he would get killed. So he, was, he continued driving to Juba. And then those people came from where did they find their child killed, so they stopped chasing the road to Juba. So they find they went and find six Ethiopian. They don't know anything. They're just sitting there preparing their car. Those people can kill them all. They don't know anything. So if if they know that somebody killed their kid and they took it to the police, police will find out. Police will go to Juba and find out and bring that person to justice. But they don't do that. And uh, this is, this is uh, the thing we need to stop. And also, uh, we here in Diaspora, we play a big, big, big role. We play a big role. You need to wash your way. We need to be careful when you tell somebody on the phone over there in Billy. If you just talk, oh, why they do that? Why they kill this person? Oh, if I'm there, I will revenge. Oh, 
Okay, now they will revenge right away. So you need, when they, they're talking to you about something happened, you need to be very, very, very careful. Because they're gonna use your word, and that's what they're gonna use for their moral, and they're gonna continue marching for what they are doing. So we are here, we are very important people for them. Maybe we don't see that. While I was there in Southern Sudan, I met two, uh, one of the uh, friends. So he called me to go to the dinner. So I went to them at the dinner, and while we were eating, he was busy on Facebook. I said, what are you doing? He said, man, I'm fighting with one guy in Kenya, and that, that person is a Malone person, and uh, I'm a government person. So you see now, a lot of people are flying from Kenya, no, from uh, Australia, America, they are with me. So that I have to continue. <laughs> so when you see something like this, ignore them. Don't even put light. Don't even put light. Don't even share it. You have to be very, very careful because social media is playing a big role there. So we need to be very careful for what we are telling our people back home. And uh, I believe when somebody born, when you are the child, you don't have, you, you can born, be born Dinka, you can be born Arab, you can be born white, you don't have a choice. You just born there. You can be born poor, you don't have a choice. But the bigger problem is when you grow up to become a person. So what a mark you want to be named after you die or during your lifetime. So you need to be marked very for the peaceful person. You need to have very good uh, stigma that people can have it. Uh, while you pass away, people can say this person did this, did this. So the struggle we have in Southern Sudan most of the struggle, we born on it, but we have to correct it. So it's our duty to correct the struggle, and we need to move on to, to have a peace. We need to move on to have a peace, and the peace that came in Southern Sudan, I know Brother Ding was saying earlier, the peace uh, was the start here. I was the first person, by the way, bought here. I was the first person bought here. I was there for a few hours. I, I didn't know where to walk. I went there early morning. I stayed for five hours. I said, I want to board first. So, so they said, okay, you want to board first? Can I board first? So I went and board first. So I only stop over here because the time management, uh, is, you know, we need to keep a chance to other people. I only stop here, but let us continue. Uh, go for peace. And peace is the only solution we have. Thank you during uh, 2013, the things that were, were happening in Malakal. So he asked me, who are Denka? I told him, Denka is like, you know your friend, Kir? He said, yeah. I was like, those are Denkas. He was like, I feel like hating them right now. So I felt sorry, I said, why? He said, look at those things that are happening in Malakal. I see people dying, my aunties, and my, they are displaced. So we have to be careful with what we put on social media. We're always sharing things, even on those days, 2013, people were bringing pictures from Rwanda, the mask are there, and they would put them like, this is the certain tribe are killing our tribe. And we we'll start like cursing and those things, we are saying a lot of things, but we don't know the background. So we have to be careful with the social media. That's the only thing I want to say.